there! Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here because today I am doing something a little different. Do y'all have a robot vacuum? If you've been on my channel for a while, you know that I bought a robot vacuum back months ago, back in the spring, when our dog Pollux was shedding like crazy. He's new to our house. I've never had a dog that sheds and it was driving me nuts. So Randy bought a robot vacuum. We We had talked to several people, we had neighbors and friends, and everybody said they had a robot vacuum. Well, I have never had one of these. Honestly, I never thought about getting a robot vacuum. They're expensive, and I didn't want to spend the money on one, and I just didn't see the point of it, to be honest. But when Pollock started all of his shedding, and every day I would look down on our tile floors and our hardwood floors in the front of the house, and there would be balls of hair, like dust bunny balls of dog hair blowing in the wind down the hall. It was time to do something about it because I was having to get out my vacuum every day, sometimes two times a day, and vacuum my house. So, Randy bought an inexpensive robot vacuum. So when he came to me and said, I'm gonna get this robot vacuum, there's this choice, or there's this choice, and I saw the price difference, I immediately, of course, y'all know me, I said, well, get the cheaper one for goodness sake. So we did. And I'm not gonna tell you what brand I bought, but if you go back to one of my videos where I talk about dog hair, I showed you this robot going around the house, and I absolutely hated it. I had it for five days, and I returned that little sucker. And here's why. I am not exaggerating when I say every 10 minutes that robot vacuum needed my attention. It would send me a notification on my phone to let me know that it needed me. It would get stuck on every rug, on every air vent, on every change of height or carpet or it was constantly stuck. It would try to go under furniture and get stuck. It would try to go around a corner and get stuck. It was like having a two-year-old child that I had to keep a constant eye on and take care of or it couldn't do its job. And y'all, not gonna spend hundreds of dollars on a robot vacuum that I have to, I have to take care of. So it went back. Then Randy, without telling me, bought a much more expensive robot vacuum. I was out walking the dogs one day, saw the delivery company go by, and came home to find a new robot vacuum sitting on my front doorstep. It was a very expensive robot vacuum, and we it does a great job, I gotta say, but the moral of this video, the point of this video is I want to give you my thoughts on a robot vacuum. If you don't have one, let me just fill you in on how they work, the qualities you want in a vacuum, and the qualities you do not want in a vacuum. What I think is an acceptable price point for a vacuum, and I am going to review a brand new robot vacuum that is new to the market. This is big news, y'all. I was contacted by a company called... Baby. Caval. And they said to me they had a new CyberVac that was coming on the market and they would love to send one to me for me to review on my YouTube channel. And which sounds fine and great. I would love a robot vacuum, but I let them know that number one, I've talked about vacuums on my channel before and how much I did not like the one that I bought. And number two, that I did, or my husband did purchase another vacuum, and we currently have it. I haven't talked about it. I don't. I haven't told you what brand I have. So I just wanted to be open and honest with Caval and let them know that I have talked about robot vacuums before. And their response is, no problem. Let us send you the vacuum. You test it out, use it in your home, talk about it on your channel, give an honest review, and we feel like we can hold up to any robot vacuum on the market. I said, okay, bring it. So here we are. So today's video, I'm going to show you the Caval robot vacuum. So I am going to use it and I'm gonna tell you what I think. But this, Caval Cybervac. This is the E30 version. 
this vacuum on Amazon right now, at the moment that I'm airing this, is $249. So it really is a middle of the road from the one that I had and hated to the one that I have and like. And then I'm gonna continue this video in a couple weeks because I feel like in order for me to give you my true, honest opinion of this vacuum, is it worth your money? Is it something you should buy? I have to put it in use. And robot vacuums take time to figure out your house. You cannot, you can't judge them on their first use. They really have to map your house and figure out where your furniture sits and where your levels of your floors change. They really just have to get settled in for about a week or so. And so I'm gonna let it do its thing. I'm gonna use it in my house every single day for the next week. And then I'm gonna continue this video and let you know my honest thoughts. So. I've had the Caval CyberVac vacuum running every single day for about two and a half weeks because I wanted to understand all of its quirks. What did it do? What did it not do? There is so much you need to know. And there are pros and cons to having a robot vacuum because it's not just as simple. Plugging it in and it goes. It just doesn't work that way. All right, so let's get in to robot vacuums. From the minute I opened that Cabal vacuum, I just didn't think it was gonna be so great. Number one, the price point. It is currently, at the timing of this video, $279. So I expected this vacuum to be exactly like the vacuum that I have returned that did not do a good job. So that was my mindset going into this whole review of this vacuum. We have had this very expensive $600 plus dollar robot vacuum for several months. Now, you're gonna say, well, what vacuum did you get? What, what was the expensive vacuum? Randy bought the Romba, or no, the iRobot Romba i7. Let's get to the vacuum. I keep my house tidy. I don't have things laying around all over the place. Really, the only stuff that's in our floor is Pollux's toys. If I clean his toys up, he drags them right back out. He didn't like me picking up your toys, Pollux. Don't put them down there, boo. Mom's gonna vacuum. The type of flooring that you have is somewhat important. I want you to see his durability on this rug because this rug, look, has things that stand up on it. Very high, like, I don't know what you call it. High, low, high, low. Pollux, are you looking for him? <laughs> but I want you to see how he goes over, I call it a he, how he goes over the rug without any problems. Look at this, he's gonna go off the rug and back on. Uh-oh, ran into the chair. Move, Pollux! Look, no issue. That really is fantastic but look at that no problem <laughs> robot vacuums run automatically you plug them in they have a base you can set a schedule and you can tell it to vacuum your house at a certain time every single day so you can say Monday through Friday do it at 1:30. On Saturdays and Sundays, do it at a different time. Or perhaps on Sunday, you don't want it to go. You can set a schedule for every single day of the week and you can tell it what time to go, which is fantastic. You don't have to pay attention to it. You don't have to manually start it, although you can if you want to. But I absolutely love the scheduling feature. Something I love, y'all, I gotta tell you. When I walk into a room, or if we had the vacuum going and I was gone, say I'm at the ice cream shop. We own an ice cream shop, if you didn't know that. <laughs> say I'm gone and I come home and the vacuum was scheduled to run while I was gone. And I walk in and I come into our living room and I can see all of the vacuum lines in the carpet. There is something so wonderful and satisfying about walking into your house when it has been freshly cleaned and there are lines in the carpet. Can y'all see the circle in the carpet where he's gone around that leg and the lines? So see how it's redoing some areas and slowing down? It detects that that area is dirty, so it's kind of concentrating on it right there. 
And it's definitely gonna find dirty if it goes behind the couch from where Pollux comes in with his muddy paws. I'm not gonna lie, I love that. Now, cheaper vacuums do not do that. The Caval and the iRobot make perfect lines back and forth. And it's because they have a feature called mapping, which I'm gonna explain to you what that is. But I love the lines in the carpet. That is a huge bonus. Robot vacuums can be operated by a remote control. I choose to use them to operate them from an app on my phone. They all have an app. You download it onto your phone. That's where you set the schedules or tell it to go, stop, you know, whatever. I just use the app on my phone. They can also be controlled by Amazon Alexa and Google, Google something which I don't use. I use neither of those. I cannot speak to how those work. I don't have those in my home. I just use the app on the phone. If I'm out somewhere and I'm like, oh my gosh, my sister's coming over and I need the carpet clean quick, I just pick up my phone and go, boop, clean, and then the vacuum goes and it cleans my house. When I get home, vacuum and done. When we first got our robot vacuum, it freaked the dogs out. As soon as the vacuum would start up, they would run to the other side of the house. Maxie would hide. He was scared to death of the thing. Pollux didn't really care. He just wanted to get away from it into the other room. Now that they're used to it, they do not care one bit. They lay on the couch and they watch it go underneath them. Pollux will actually like play with the robot vacuum. He will intentionally get in front of it. He will intentionally lay down in front of it just to see if it's going to get him. Like it has become a game with Pollux and he will put his toys in front of the vacuum. It is so funny. What's well, coming after you, Pollux? Go. <laughs> Mama got your bed in the kitchen. Here it comes. Now, what did you do that for? Wait a minute, buddy. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's see what's going to happen here. What's it going to do when it hits the toy? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh! If y'all follow me on Instagram, I shared a picture of Pollux. I'd pulled his bed into the kitchen because I'd put all of his toys in his bed and needed his bed out of the living room because I was testing the new Caval Cybovac. And I needed the room like clean and clear. Well, Pollux was so upset that I had touched his toys and moved his bed that he came in the kitchen and laid down on top of all of his toys, like protecting the toys from me and the robot vacuum. And I shared it on Instagram. It's one of my favorite pictures of Pollux. It is absolutely so cute. But anyway, your pets might freak out in the beginning, but honestly, mine got used to it pretty quickly. They don't even care now. Let's talk about mapping. Mapping is super important. Let me explain to you what that is and what it means to have it or not have it. If you have a vacuum that does not have mapping, the best way I can describe it to you is like an old school pinball machine. The vacuum is going to go, it's going to run into something, and then it's just going to shoot it off into another direction. So the vacuum is just like bing, bing, bing all over your house or whatever room it's in. There is no methodology. There is no system. It doesn't know that it vacuums certain areas and not others. It's just bing, 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 bing until it runs out of battery. When you have a robot vacuum that has mapping, which you absolutely want, it means that the vacuum has brains. And over time, it learns the room. It learns the layout of your rooms and your house. And so the vacuum will methodically go back and forth and back and forth until it has vacuumed every single inch of the room. So it just goes like this back and forth, back and forth. And if it does run into something, it stops, it pivots, it gets itself lined back up, and it continues where it came from. The longer that you have your robot vacuum, the smarter that it gets. The more passes it is made in your house, the better it knows and understands your house and where the furniture is. And so, so the, the, the better, the more, how do I wanna say this? The more accurate and precise the vacuum comes the longer that you've had it. Your robot vacuum requires daily maintenance. Yes, 
You heard me, daily maintenance. It has a bin, and that bin gets full of all of the dust and the hair and whatever it vacuumed up the day before. So if my vacuum runs today, the bin is going to be full, or, it, or it's full in my house anyway. So tomorrow, that vacuum is not gonna run until I have emptied the bin. So you have to remember every day, you have to empty that bin or your house is not gonna get vacuumed. I am gonna empty the bin before it gets started today because I wanna show you how much stuff is in this bin. You're not gonna believe this. Look at this. Look at that. This is on my floors every single day and it's from I'm gonna blame it on the dogs. Yes, I'm sure some of my gray hair is in there. Yeah, there's probably one right there. But anyway, I'm gonna to totally blame it on the dogs. But look at this. This is what my robot vacuum is picking up from my house every day. When I really stop and think about it, that's disgusting. And when I really stop and think about it and I see how much yuck is being picked up from my floors every day, 200 and something dollars, for a robot vacuum that does a really good job and does this every single day so that I don't have to, that's well worth the money in my opinion. All you have to do is like, look at that. This is, this is such Pollock's hair. Look who's watching me. It's this guy, it's his hair. What you doing boo? Hmm, hmm, what are you doing? Am I talking about you? You have to do I'm gonna probably weekly maintenance on the vacuum. The rollers and the brushes on the underside of the vacuum get tangled up with hair and pieces of thread or string from your clothes that are on the floor. They require maintenance. You have to pop off the rollers. You have to get all the hair and the gunk and the pieces of carpet off of the rollers. You have to clean the filter about once a week. These are things you have to do. So again, Maintenance, it does require maintenance. Robot vacuums can honestly be annoying. I know they're doing a job for me. It keeps me from having to vacuum the house, but they can be annoying. And here's what I mean. When the vacuums are on carpet, they are super quiet. I don't mind it at all. I honestly don't even hear them. When they're coming down the hall on a ceramic tile floor, which has a little bump every time there's a new tile, or on hardwood, they can be noisy. And if I'm in the kitchen trying to do something, like it can, it can just get on my nerves. And so there are a lot of times I just don't wanna hear it and I just have to pick up my phone and say, go home, because I just can't tolerate it. If you have a very set schedule, if you work outside of your home, then absolutely set the robot to do its thing while you're gone so you don't have to hear it. Robot vacuums can only clean on one level of your house. They cannot get up the stairs. I have a step down into my living room. So the robot vacuum cannot go into my living room. If I want my living room vacuumed, I have to pick it up and put it down there. Robot vacuums have a home base that have to be plugged into a wall. This is where your robot vacuum lives when it is not vacuuming your house. Well, that base has to stay put and you have to look at it. So choose a place that is easy for the, the vacuum to get to, but kinda out of eyesight. Randy, of course, plugged ours in right at the front door. When you walk in our front door, you are looking at the base to the robot vacuum. I hate it, and I'm gonna move it after this video. Here's the cabal. This is literally, you come in our front door, and this is what I get to look at. I'm moving it, y'all, I'm moving it. But here it is, this is, this is what it looks like. This is the base and it does have to plug in because this is where it comes to charge. The Caval vacuum will run 150 minutes on a charge. Y'all, that is a long time. That is two and a half hours that this little vacuum will run before it has to go home for a charge. What's it doing, Pollock? Uh, see, look at that. Rub to hardwood floor. Doesn't care. Oh, burn. Wow. 
which is the best vacuum for what price? And I'm gonna give you my opinion. My vote goes to the Caval. It does a fantastic job. There's really one thing that the Caval does not do. It is something that the iRobot does that I miss in the Caval. Once the vacuums have mapped your house, it knows what your house looks like and where your furniture sits. Well, the perfect example is I have a chair in my bedroom that for some reason is higher in the front and lower in the back. So the vacuums can go underneath there, but they get stuck. There's plenty of room to go in and they get stuck. They can never get back out. So the Caval is not smart enough to know I should not go underneath that chair. And there is no way for me to tell it, don't go under the chair. Uh, the Caval does come with some magnetic strips that you can lay down. Like if there's a room in your house that you don't want it to go in, you can put this magnetic strip on your floor and when the vacuum hits it, it knows it's not supposed to cross. It doesn't go in a room, which is fine if you have a whole room and if you want those magnetic strips laying on your floor every single day. There is no way for me to tell it don't go underneath that chair or don't go in that room. It's just simply, it's just gonna get stuck every time. So I've learned that I have to put something underneath the chair that when it attempts to go underneath there, it hits it and turns around rather than going underneath there and getting stuck and then it's stuck. I gotta get it out. With the iRobot, you can absolutely say when you're looking at the app, you can see that room, you can see where the chair is, and you can draw a red square around it. And so the vacuum knows not to go underneath the chair. Or if there's a room you don't want it to go in on the app, you just block off the room. But I put, we have like a long pillowcasey thing that I put underneath there. So see, watch. He can't get underneath there now. So he's hitting it and he'll come back out. And I'm hoping this does the trick. I just figured this out yesterday. See, he figured it out. Now he's back out. He's gonna go around. Uh-oh, coming at me. Roopers. When the cabal comes in the bedroom, Pollux gets on the bed to watch him. He's supervising. Okay, let's see what he does now. This is where he gets stuck. Let's see. Oh, see, he hit that pillow and he knew not to go underneath there. This is what I mean by mapping. See how he's methodically going back and forth and back and forth in straight lines. And so when it hits the wall, it does a little pivot and it moves forward and it knows to come back in the next appropriate line. This is why mapping is so important. And there it goes back. Do you love it, Boo? Hmm, you love it. Mama had to put your beds up here so he doesn't, he can vacuum under Pollux's beds. Right. Yeah, we're just a watching him. Let's see what he's gonna do over here. Perfect. So y'all, I'm running out of wind. This has been a long video with lots of information. I know. In the end, I highly suggest the Caval. I truly do. Not because they sent me a free vacuum. I know you think that is a factor in my decision and in this video, but it is not. And I made that very clear to the Caval folks when they contacted me and wanted to send me the vacuum. So for the difference in price, $279 compared to $600, if I had it to do over again, this is what I would buy, the Caval E30. I truly would. 
for the money and for all the features and all of the great things that it does, it is absolutely worth the money. So there is all the scoop on robot vacuums. I know that's a lot of information, but I feel like it is very important information that you need to know if you are considering purchasing a robot vacuum but I've kind of laid out the difference for you. And if you ask me, and if I had to do it all over again and spend my money to purchase a robot vacuum, I would purchase the Cabal E30. It is a great price point. It does a fantastic job. And for that really one little difference between it and the more expensive iRobot, the price difference, y'all, does not justify that for me. So I would purchase the Caval. If you're interested in the Caval E30, I'll provide a link in the description box below. It's available on Amazon. It's new to the market and it's a fantastic product. I have to give it a thumbs up. I really, truly have to give it a thumbs up. So there's the scoop. I hope you enjoyed the video. Y'all, this has been such a long video to make. So much research and time and effort and filming and studying and a lot has gone into this video for you today. So I've had my vacuums turned off because I didn't want them firing up in the middle of my video. But I'm gonna turn them on now because my floors need to be cleaned because the dogs have been running around playing all day long. But thank you for watching, and if you choose to get a robot vacuum, I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. See you later.